During this video, we will walk you through another educational activity created by the Evolve Extreme Blue team. This activity will be from two users' perspectives. We'll follow Dan and his coworker Mary around as they complete the activity. First, let's get to know Dan and Mary. Dan and Mary work in the IT department in a mid-market business. Their company recently purchased a sand volume controller and now they need to learn how to use it. They finished installing the sand volume controller and are trying to understand what virtual storage is. The help section in the sand volume controller suggested they visit the virtual education center in Second Life to learn about virtual storage, so they log in. Hey Mary, let's check out the virtual education center and see if we can find some more information about virtual storage. Here's a globe for the sand volume controller. I'll click it and see if it's what we need. It says we'll learn how physical storage can be pooled into customized virtual storage. Perfect! And we can work together. Yeah, alright. Let's check it out. Let's get started. In this phase, you will select your storage devices to create a simulated infrastructure. Let's try to model our real network. I think we have three IBM devices and one EMC. Hey, and don't forget our old Sun storage. You're right. I'll set up the IBM storage. I'll take the other two. Looks like we are good to go. What's next? A pop quiz. One of your storage devices is nearing full utilization. What should you do? I wish we could delete some applications. Yeah, we never seem to have the budget to buy more storage. So I guess the answer is to use the sand volume controller to virtualize my storage. Sweet. On to phase two. Now we'll learn about virtual storage. Virtual storage pools can be created based on criteria you select, including performance, geography, and quality. How should we create our virtual storage pools, Mary? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what virtual storage pools are yet. What do you think? Well, it seems like it would be nice to be able to create pools based on performance. So let's try that. So we need to select our low-class performance pool. Our Sun machine is a lot older than our other machines. Let's put it in the low class. Agreed. Hey, did you see that red pool just grow? I did. I wonder if it will grow again for the next pool. Now mid-class. Well, I've got that IBM machine that is a little bit older than the others and isn't quite top of the line anymore. The blue pool just grew. And our EMC isn't quite as fast as our other two IBM machines. I wonder if we can put them in the same pool even though they aren't the same brand. Hey, it seems to have worked. And the blue area grew even more. So Dan, I guess the size of the pool is directly related to the amount of physical storage. That leaves our two new IBM machines for our high-class performance pool. Let's test the relationship between the pools and the physical storage. I'm going to change our EMC machine to be in the high-class storage. Looks like you're right, Mary. It's pretty cool to be able to watch the pools grow and shrink. What's the next step, Dan? Let's check out these capacity meters. As I raise the utilization of the IBM machine, the pool also fills up. And the percent free decreases. Neat! Another pop quiz. You have a critical application dedicated to a specific storage device that is filled to 99% capacity. What should we do? A. Buy more storage. We can't afford to keep buying storage. B. Use the sand volume controller to pool storage and balance workload with other storage devices in the network. That seems like it could be right. Or C, take the application offline and migrate it to another storage device with excess capacity. People are never happy when we take their applications offline. So I think it's B. We got it right. It's good to know that the sand volume controller can help with utilization issues. So we're done. It's pretty neat that we were able to create a simulation of our real infrastructure. I'm glad the sand volume controller will be able to manage all of our storage and not just the IBM machines. And in phase two, we learned how we could take our storage devices and pull them into virtual storage. And we learned that we could create one pool of storage or create performance-based pools. Wow, this activity was really helpful. 
I feel like I finally understand what virtual storage is. I've got to get going to another meeting. I'll talk to you later, Dan. It was fun working with you. I think I'm going to stick around and explore the rest of the Virtual Education Center. Bye, Mary. In this activity, Dan and Mary were able to successfully work together to learn how their physical storage could be pooled into virtual storage and some of the benefits of that virtualized storage. They interacted with each other in the activity, so they were able to learn from each other and remain engaged in the activity.